Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Late Night Football. Welcome to episode five of our season preview series. And we're doing Chelsea, as I said in the Liverpool video. By the way, if you missed those earlier videos, do check them out. Uh, links, there will be the playlist link at the end of this video. So once you finish watching this, go back and watch the others if you haven't seen them yet. But we're doing Chelsea. And as I said in that Liverpool video, I think that one of the two most complicated ones, because at the start of the of, of maybe, you know, towards the end of last week, start of this week, I was thinking when I do Chelsea, where am I going to put them? And I thought I'm going to put them top four. Um, because for me, um, Chelsea are one of those teams that, you know, you just never know what you get with them. And after a bad season, they usually come back and they do and they do very well in the next one. So it's always tricky to pick where Chelsea are going to finish. But then there was that injury to Nkunku. There was, you know, there's always injury to Fofana from before as well. Just started to the end. Of course, there's that issue with the midfield as well. So I think, are Chelsea actually going to finish in top four? I mean, are their powers of recovery that good to overcome all of that? Now, it has been, you know, and, and so that made me think, where do I put them? And so I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to say that they're going to finish fifth because um, I don't think they will finish in top four. I just feel that they're going to finish fifth. But if you can also qualify for Champions League, there'll be another video on that later. But um, I think they'll finish fifth. I think they'll finish outside the top four because as I, as much as I feel like um, they could have a good season, I feel that injury to Nkunku is a big, big blow because I think he was going to be key to how they were going to play this season and him going out. Now, he's not going to play as a striker. They've got Nicholas Jackson as a striker there and they've got other options. I just feel that in that number 10, his dynamism, I think, I think would have made a massive difference. And the fact that he's a goal threat from a number 10 position, that's always a big, big deal. But um, so I feel they'll be outside the top four. But what I will say, um, and then we'll actually come back to this later, but it is a new season for Chelsea. I mean, last season was absolutely disastrous and nobody nobody can get any real positives out of that, out of that season. But I mean, they finished 12th. Uh, there was one bad performance after another. There were a couple of bright spots, uh, bright moments, but not really bright memories. And I think that's something that they will look to rectify this season. What will be an advantage for them is the fact that they don't have to play in Europe next season, no Europa League, no Conference League, no Champions League. So, uh, you know, Pochettino will have the benefit of being able to work with, um, you know, players for an extended period of time. I do feel managers generally prefer to play games rather than have training sessions because, you know, anybody can look good in training, right? It's always about the real game and how you can adapt to the real game. So I think most managers do prefer to play uh, play games. What I think will also help Pochettino is the fact that he doesn't need to have a big squad because he's not got many European games. So he can afford to have like 17, 18 players and just, you know, as long as, you know, most of them don't get injuries, which... Uh, Touch wood hasn't really happened yet, but um, you know if you can avoid injuries, I think having a small squad helps because then you can see the players up close, and when you're ready to you know expand the squad next season, you kind of know who's gonna stay, who's gonna go. It makes it a bit easier, I feel, when you don't have European football if you're a new manager. Um, so from that perspective, I think Chelsea will benefit, and therefore I feel like the injuries are not going to be as severely um, consequential as they otherwise could have been. Because imagine if you have to play uh, you know Europa League or Conference League, and you've got to play two three games a week, and you know you're losing players to injury, then it becomes a problem because it impacts your league form, it impacts your European form. But in this case, because they'll mostly be playing one game a week. Um, they, they'll have the option, you know, to go, right, players, I can play my same 11 most games because, you know, there's more recovery time. So I feel that's going to help Chelsea out a lot. Um, the, the key issue for Chelsea is that is actually one of the, is, is the midfield because there's not a lot of options there. Now, if Lavia comes in, they put a bit in as, you know, we, we posted about that earlier. Now, if Lavia comes in, that's, that's a fantastic midfield. You've got Lavia, you've got uh, Enzo Fernandez, you've got Nkunku when he comes back, maybe Gallagher or Chakwameka, whoever. They've got players there who can, they've got a good, decent enough midfield um, to compete. Uh, without Lavia at the moment, it's Gallagher and Enzo and, and that doesn't necessarily fill me, me with a lot of confidence. Um, so, I think getting another another one more midfielder, whether that's Lavia or that's Caicedo, could be Caicedo as well, but they've been looking at Caicedo for so long. Um, and maybe the Lavia bit is a way of, of to tell Brighton, look, you know, if you don't want to sell him, um, you know, we've always got alternatives. And so this pushes Caicedo to kind of, you know, push through the move. Like he's like, well, I want to leave. And now, you know, these guys are going to stand at the midfielder. You're not going to let me leave. So maybe that that's a tactic as well. But whoever they get, whether they get Lavia, whether they get Caicedo, I think if they can up, get one more midfielder in, that gives them a very solid base. Um, at the back, Fofana's injury is another blow for him, for the club, because they would have probably looked at him as, as one of the um, you know, important players. But they will be out for a while as well. So that that is an area of concern as well at the back. Um, but um, I, th I think Chelsea still have enough um, to be able to to ride the wave, so to speak. I mean, James, you know, is again another player who's very injury prone. But they've got Malo Gusto there now, who I think can um, cover, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
adequately is the word adequately i'm looking for zodi can cover adequately um ian matson of course has been a revelation for them as well um in pre-season so hopefully he can make the step up to regular season games so there's a lot to be excited about if you're a chelsea fan there's a lot to be excited about and now again my prediction of fifth is based on emotion not logic and logically i don't think i think they'll probably finish seventh or eight if you ask me logically I think they'll finish 7th or 8th. But football really follows logic. I mean, who expected Arsenal to finish 2nd sec- last season? So, again, I'm going with an emotional um, uh, uh, prediction rather than a logical prediction because sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to create, uh, um, you know, some space for emotion in football as well. So, therefore, I'm going with 5th. Now, I know, again, it's controversial. Like the Liverpool prediction, I think it's, it's controversial. But that's that's where I feel like I feel like they will have a good season because they don't have to play a lot of games. I think that's going to be a massive advantage for them over teams like maybe, um, you know, Man- Manchester United or, um, uh, you know, Brighton and Aston Villa, the other guys who are going to be probably in and around those spots. That's the advantage that they have is that they don't have to play a lot of games and that will hold them in good stead. Um, there's still a few gaps that need to be addressed uh, in the squad, I feel. Um, Desasi, by the way, yes, they've got Desasi in centre-back as well, who could be a good player. So they've got Desasi, you've got um, maybe Thiago Silva. If, if they can keep the, most of their players fit, that's the key question. They can keep most of their players fit. There's a good 11, 12 players there. Um, and they won't need more than 15, 16 players if everybody gets safe in because they're going to play, they're going to play one game a week um, in the Cups or whatever, right? Um, at least till the later stages. So that that's why I think they, they that's why I think they have the advantage. But and I guess uh, you know that that's the that's the key part whether they can keep them fit. That that's that's the, that's the question. I think Pochettino is a good appointment for Chelsea. I'm a little you know I'm I'm worried that I'm not for Chelsea over Manchester United. So there might be some people in the media later going well maybe you know maybe Pochettino was the appointment for Chelsea, for United and not for Chelsea. And look at how well he's done. So I'm always wary of that. But I do think um, Pochettino is a good manager. I think Chelsea will suit him a bit. Um, because um, you know at least at, at, you know at least he has it because this is a fresh template. So Pochettino, in many ways, is a fresh template. This was a team that went absolutely low last season. There was, you know, you can't really fall any more lower than that if you're Chelsea. So this is, a, you know, so, so expectations will be an all-time low for Chelsea, and therefore whatever he achieves, they step up. And for him, that that makes his job a lot easier. When you come into a team that's shattered uh, morale-wise, the fans are, you know, down. It is much easier to come and lift them up, them up, lift them up, and and create your own template as opposed to a club like PSG where everybody expects. By winning the league is a guarantee. You've got to try and win the Champions League. That was a much difficult job. So I feel it'll be, you know, and he'll have a point to prove. He'll have a point to prove that he can be a big club manager. He failed at PSG, um, and now he's got, you know, he didn't get the United job. So for him, it's a matter of proving, look, I can be a big club manager. I can come to a big club and make them, um, you know, become something again. So I think he wants to do that, and that that will give him the motivation as well. Um, tactically, I think Chelsea's setups will suit him because Chelsea players are used to playing a three at the back. They can play four at the back and Pochettino likes both. So, you know, it, it will help him. Uh, the fresh template allows him to bring in players that he wants and to mold the players that he wants to, to mold them as well. So that will be beneficial as well. So there's a lot for Pochettino to really enjoy about this job um, and, and to really stamp his authority and stamp, make his mark with the club. Uh, whether we like, feel whether he'll be able to do it or not is another question. But I think that this, this, you know, if if you're if you're Mauricio Pochettino, I don't think you could have walked into a better situation uh, than this one. But you're coming to a big club, but a club that is still recovering from a horror season, and therefore you've got the the the, the task of lifting them up, but at the same time being able to really, um, you know, being able to take advantage of the low expectations and really overachieve. So uh, enjoy that. Um, for my for me, the player to watch is going to be Enzo Fernandez. I mean, I was, you know, very impressed when Chelsea signed him. They really put a lot of money out there. And to be honest, it's, it was one of those big deals that it, it's still unbelievable how they got that deal done, but they got it done. And he did show some flashes of brilliance. He's shown some flashes of brilliance last season. Um, in preseason, I think he's going to have a big season. If they can get a good midfield around him, and that's the key point, if they can get a good midfield around him, I think there's a class player in there that is really just waiting to, you know, un- be unleashed. I think he could be a fantastic player for Chelsea this season. We've always thought about midfield as being the most important part of the pitch and, you know, and having a good midfield is key to, to winning anything in football. And if they can get those pieces, and they've already got a big piece in of, of Enzo Fernandez, and if they can build a key, get a couple of other key pieces around him, I, I think Chelsea will be, will be a tough proposition. So, um, that, that's where I am at. And again, with Liverpool, as I said, the same with Chelsea, it feels like it's not done yet. It feels like there's still more business that Chelsea need to conduct. And therefore, it's very hard to make a prediction at this point. Um, when I say fifth, I think more, I'm also looking more at the point that there's going to be more players coming in. Like, I'm not making, basing it on what the players, what players there are currently. I'm cheating a bit. I said I would do it on this, but I'm, I almost feel like there will be other players that will come in and that's going to make this prediction more viable. 
Um, now I could be wrong and then nobody will come in, but I just like with Liverpool, I just feel like there's more like this can't be it for Chelsea's transfer window. This can't be there's gonna be more players coming in. And therefore, you know, I don't know which who's gonna come in, but I feel like there's gonna be more and that's gonna put up Chelsea. Um, you know, um whoever that is. And I am excited for Sanjo Fernandez. I'm also low-key excited for Nicholas Jackson because I think he's had a good preseason and he's someone I think who's probably gonna be a bit of one of those understated signings who goes on to do really well. Um I'm not saying he's gonna score 20, 30 goals this season, but I do think that he will be a key cog in that Chelsea machine. So I'm excited. And particularly with Nkunku's injury, that injury that already puts a bit more responsibility on his shoulders. And let's see how he can respond. So I'm excited to watch Chelsea this season. I'm excited for a couple of their players. Uh, Mikhail Mudrik, another one who's going to have a vital season that he's, you know, he had a horror half season last time around, but now he's got preseason, he's got time to adapt. And he's obviously got the physical attributes. It's about, you know, marrying that with the technical attributes and putting it all together and, and you know, and, and proving the potential that he has. So another player to to watch. I'm not excited. I'm not saying that he's one to watch out for like, from, from my perspective, but I think he's he's someone who could be a, an interesting uh, prospect this season as well. So lots to get excited about, as I said, uh, for Chelsea. And if you're a Chelsea fan, this is a good time as any to to, to look at because sometimes, um, you know, the season after a horror season is often exciting because, you know, as everybody starts fresh, and you've got the whole, um, you know, uh, atmosphere changes. You've got a new manager. At least, uh, you know, you can at least go in with optimism. So um, that things will only get up from last season. They can't get any worse. So yeah, let's see. Let's see how we'll do. But I think they'll have a good season. I do think they'll have a good season. Anyway, smash like on this video. Share your thoughts on on what do you think Chelsea season could look like. Um, do you agree with my prediction? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Let me know in the comment section. As I said, fifth is an emotional prediction. They could finish seventh, eighth, anywhere. Uh, they could even finish second. To be honest, like I, I I'm really struggling to think where they could actually. You know, the, Chelsea and Liverpool are the hardest to pay because you never know what what you get from them. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, they could finish anywhere from second to eighth. For me, I think just if second to tenth, I was between second and tenth. They could finish anywhere. I'm going with fifth because it's sort of in the middle, but they could finish really anywhere in the league behind Manchester City. So share your thoughts, of course, on that. And uh, do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We always appreciate the support. We're getting close to 360 subscribers on YouTube, close to 3,200 subscribers on uh, Facebook. So help us cross those milestones by subscribing to our channels. Links are in the description below. We always appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.